Previously on Lipstick Jungle. There's also some holes in here. This area is prone to flooding. Obviously that's no good. Excuse the hockey rink, I am Canadian. Before we get back to the interior of this project, I wanted to take a second to show you what I ended up doing on the outside to stop the water problems. As you can see, I caulked all along the edge of the house to the slab and filled the crack in the slab. Most importantly, I've installed a large plastic cover over the window and sill with caulking along the top. Obviously, this isn't the prettiest thing to look at, but we'll do the job until the spring comes and I can fix the slab and the gutters. Anyways, back to the inside. Okay, so obviously we need to build some kind of bulkhead to hide this beam and this ductwork over here. So for this side, it's going to be simple. I'm just going to attach a three quarter inch piece of plywood. It's going to drop down to just about flush. And I'm going to build out on both sides here and here with another piece of three quarter attached to it. And that will give me a little bit more of a screwing edge so the plywood doesn't really split. It's easier to hit with the screw when I go to install the drywall. Because I don't want another piece of plywood connecting it, I'm going to connect it with just the drywall minimizing the amount of headroom loss we have because, you know, things are getting kind of tight in here. Over here, obviously, I'll have to do something else. Maybe some 2 by 4s drop from the, the joist and then, you know, we'll frame it in from there. We'll figure it out. Okay, so you see I've got the bulkhead installed, we've got the ductwork run inside of it, and now it's on to putting up the strapping. And the reason I'm doing strapping is I wanted to do a drop ceiling, but turns out that's going to cost like $500, and the two sheets of drywall and the leftover 2 by material I have left is going to be like $30, so that's the direction we're going to go. Anyways, I'm going to mark out my 16 inch on centers, and then I'm going to put up my 2 by material strapping. Some instances it's a full 2 by 4 some instances I ripped a 2 by 4 and a half. It doesn't matter, we're just going for that thickness. And the reason for this is mainly because of how I built out these walls originally, using this 2 by 4 underneath, so that spacing will be off if we use the drywall. As well as, we have some pipes here, which I didn't do, that's how the house came, and I'm not going to fix it. And they kind of go below the joist here, so we need that extra spacing. Same thing for a little bit of clearance with these shutoffs, which I will be cutting access holes for, but that's the reason. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, so you can see all the strapping is up and I have my little triangle bulkhead around the ductwork over there. And now I've begun to lay out some of the patchwork or the access panels that need to be cut into the ceiling of the drywall here. So this piece is going to go up here. It's got room for this and that shutoff valve. And then I'm just going to kind of gloss through the drywall. You guys know how drywall works. There's a lot of better videos out there that'll tell you how to do drywall. So let's just kind of speed through this. So you've noticed I put up the roof, then this top section, and now this bottom section. That's because we want about a half inch of gap between the floor and the bottom of the drywall. Now to help me in getting this seam really tight together, I've got these two pieces of wood that are cut very thin at the end, and I've just put a dowel at the end. So it's very easy to get leverage and just push this up nice and tight when I go to screw in the drywall screws. 
So with the top few rows of screws holding the drywall in place, I've now got my marking for the center of my electrical box, one here, one there. And I don't want to attach any screws in the bottom because that'll probably crack the drywall and put too much stress on things. So just a few to hold it up and then plunge into the center with our follower bit or pattern or flush trim. I'm not sure what the hell it's called, but it's basically got like a faux bearing on the bottom that doesn't cut. So that'll ride on the inside of the box. And then we'll go to the outside of the box and trace the outside and this will just snap into place. And just like that, all the drywall is complete. And the echo in here is crazy now. Anyways, it's not really complete. We need to start doing the metal corner beatings on the exterior corners. Now I'm going for the metal corners as I don't really like those paper all in ones that you kind of tape down with the mud and, and that's not for me. So I'm gonna use the metal beads and I'm gonna use inch and a quarter ring shank nails to hold them flush. You don't wanna use the screws as the profile of the head, it doesn't make them sit quite flush. So always use the nails when you're doing the corners. And then after that, we're gonna tape all of our corners, our interior corners, and then all of our flat faces as well. So let's get to that, start mudding. So you can see because of the previous construction, there was these big pits in the ground where I assume they nailed into the concrete and it got ripped up and destroyed. Then over here you can see they actually have anchors in the concrete. I'm going to remove these, but first I'm going to clean up these spots which were painted over by me, you know, back in the day. I'm going to use the hydraulic cement patch and cover this. I really want it to bond to the cement and not the paint. So finally, after a marathon of taping and kind of a first coat, we're going to start with the next coat of mud to cover up all these exterior corners. And this is where the fun begins because uh, I'm not that good at mudding. Finally, all the drywall and mudding is done. You see I just vacuumed off all the dust. Next, I'm gonna go around with a very, very lightly damp towel and just wipe everything down, get all that dust off. Then we're gonna put on the drywall primer. Then we're gonna paint the walls. We're gonna clean up the floor, paint the floor, then we'll get the trim up.
So next I want to show you guys how I've built every closet organizer in my house, which is just a simple shelf and an inch and a half black fence post. Now this thing is super rigid and has had zero sag in all the closets. I've had some four foot spans, still no sag. These things are super strong and super cheap. I think it's like 12 bucks at Home Depot or whatever. And I'm just going to take some 5 8 inch melamine, create a shelf, and then two little brackets on the side to support this post. I'll show you what I mean. It's super easy, super strong, and super cheap. Okay, you see I've got the shelf set up in my triple screw gear vise. And now I'm just going to put some edge banding on this front edge that's going to be exposed. Same thing on the two side pieces. They'll get two small pieces of edge banding where they're going to be visible. We don't want to see this particle board. Here I am inside this closet and you see I've got my piece here with the, still the particle board exposed on top. So our two show faces here and here. We have a little bit of blowout on the back which we're hiding against the wall. And I've set my height right here to 15 inches from the ceiling. So I'll just put this right here and then drive in three inch screws, two here and then one over here. And these will go directly into the studs and there'll be plenty of support. Now I'm going to attach the other side after that but I'm going to be only installing one screw on that because I'm going to be taking it out immediately once I've located all my studs and screwed it in place and then putting the black pipe in this end because this will be permanently affixed and then sliding that side down to allow that to fit. Since there's no like cutout right here to allow the pipe to slide in, it's going to be locked in place forever. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and replace, you know, my temporary lighting over here and over there. We've got this guy, which is going to go here. It's got two lights in one fixture, and then this guy is just a single bulb. So let's get that done. So I've scraped off all the crap from the floor, I vacuumed it twice and mopped it, and now we're ready to go ahead and put on this floor paint once again. So you can see it peeled off because of the water damage before, but I have faith that it's going to stick very well this time. Okay, so we're finally at that point. It's time to put up all the trim. I've got my miter saw down here and all the trim. And then I've also got this cork board. This is gonna cover up this electrical panel. I could have went a few ways with this. I could have hung a pitcher or built a cabinet around that. But ultimately, if I build a cabinet around it or something like that, you're gonna lose a lot of wall space. And you know, my son will wanna hang his drawings and stuff. So we figured this is a good happy medium. So big cork board right here, everyone's happy.
damn, I'm good.